Good morning and welcome to the Tommy Watson Show, brought to you by Express Oil Change and Tire Engineers. I'm your host, Doug Dersmer, and as usual, we are coming to you live from the Sports Lab at Lambert High School, where in just a moment we'll review last night's 26-7 victory of the Lambert Longhorns over the North Forsyth Raiders. And as usual, I'd like to welcome Coach Watson to the show. Coach, good morning. What a fabulous night. Congratulations on the win. We go 6-2 and two on the year and 2-2 two and two in region. Uh, what a tremendous victory last night. Thank you very much. It was, uh, it was a very fun night, very exciting night to be a Longhorn and just proud of everybody involved, the kids, the players, the, the, you know, the coaches, everybody involved, man. It was, it was a great night, and uh, kids deserved it. They, they did. They played great, and coaches, I know this, uh, as, as seniors played uh, maybe their last game at home, uh, it's always probably a difficult night, and uh, a lot of emotions for those guys, and they, they left nothing out there. They didn't, they didn't want to regret it. Yeah, we talked all week, you know, about the, you know, the team that is willing to hurt the longest was going to win that football game. And you know, those, those seniors we got, man, there ain't many of them, but they're scrappy. They want to win. They do everything I ask them to do. So, man, I'm just super proud that they won. If I'm not mistaken, I'm, I'm pretty confident in what I'm about to say that I think that's the first time this senior class ever beat North Forsyth High School. So, big accomplishment for those guys. But just so proud for them, man, and for our program and our coaches and, and our school. And, Coach, I heard a couple of them actually at the game last night talking about not only is it the first time they beat North, but I, this will be the first winning record they've had uh, as a class as well. Well, that that, that says a lot about about their leadership and about the the buy-in I got from them when I first got here. But, man, they uh, – again, there ain't many of them, but everything I ask them to do, they lead the way with it. Coach, uh, 2016, I believe, was the last time we won six games uh, in a year, and we've already eclipsed that with two left. And uh, looking forward to adding a couple more before the, before the year's out. But uh, really, what a great way to end it, and I'm so happy for those kids. Yeah, man, me too. So I'm just looking forward to you know cleaning up the mistakes from this one and moving on to the next one. You know, Coach, I was at practice a couple of days this week. Um, you guys had a great week of practice, it looked like to me. <clears throat> Coming off that tough loss last week at Denmark, you never know how – that hangover might affect us, but it didn't affect us one ounce. You guys were prepared and ready to go. Yep, uh, and that, that's a, a compliment to the coaching staff, to to the kids, because, I mean, you've seen us practice a bunch. I mean, we get after that practice now. Practice is not easy, and and they didn't flinch. You know, it was uh, – it was good, man. Good good to see hard work pay off for sure. Coach, last night was another game of possessions. There weren't many. We'll talk about it a little bit. I, I went back and looked at my notes. I, I, we had six possessions on the night. Actually, I guess seven. We count that last last uh, victory formation as, 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 a, as a possession. But we had six. They had six. We had to make them count, and we did. Uh, they deferred, and we took the uh, kickoff, folk, Coach, and just and just executed really well. Yeah, they uh, – we. I think both teams wanted to play defense, just kind of fill each other's sure. offense all out. But they uh, they they won the toss in the third, and man, what an opening drive by our offense! Uh, our offense, uh, you know, I was aware of this, but it really didn't come to fruitation to my mind. Man, that I think they were giving up like nine points a game. We and played another stingy defense. Yeah, their their front, their defensive front, it was phenomenal. And we knew that going in. I was worried to death could we block them and whatnot. But, man, our O-line played well and James and Harrison and the wild outs. Everybody made plays. You know, we went in with a with a plan. If they want to do this, we're going to do that. And, you know, every time they made an adjustment, our offensive staff counterpunched and – you know, just great job by the offensive staff and the offensive players for sure. Coach, uh, they they were they were pretty good, pretty big team. They they had some size on on, on both sides of the ball, and uh, it was uh, it was a tall order for us, but we we stood the test. Yeah, they was uh they, they're a big physical physical football team, no doubt. Coach Crafts and and those guys have done an unbelievable job at North. I got the most respect for for what they do there. I mean, kids work hard, they play hard, they they you know they play with class. It's for just first class program and. It's two good football teams going going against each other last night. It was coaching. Both teams needed to win real bad. Uh, thankfully, we came out on top. And uh, it's uh, it gets tight as we it, it, as we close into the year here. This region standings we'll talk about toward the end of the show, but it's it's tightening up real tight right now. Yeah, it's going to get interesting. It for is sure. <laughs> a lot of great games left to play. Coach, let's talk about that first drive. Uh, as you said, it was a seven play drive, and we uh, we had some great plays on there, and, and and struck early first, which I thought was very important for us after the again the loss last week, and 
uh, playing a, a very solid defense that doesn't give up many points, and we took it down the field right away and put seven on the board. Excuse me, six on the board. Yeah, we did. You know, James played well. We, we mixed in the run and passed very well. Uh, wild outs to get him. It, it was just a great opening drive. Anytime you can take the ball – against a really good defense on the opening drive and go first and 80 and get points out of it, that, that's impressive. And, you know, that that was the thing that that I think set the tone last week against Denmark. We took the – we took the – they punted to us and we took the ball and methodically against, again, another phenomenal defense in Denmark – and moved it all the way down the field to like the 25, 28 yard line and fumbled the ball. Put on the ground, yeah. And that was a big turning point in that game because when, when you do what we did last night to a team that prides their self in playing defense, they get many points. They yeah. say, uh oh. Yeah. Uh oh, there's a problem. You know, and so that was good, man. That, that just set the stage, set the set the, the tempo for the night. And, and it, look, we, we're not messing around. We're here to play football. You know, Coach, on our first series, too, I think we uh, we had it uh, third down on the, on the third play of the game, and it was very interesting because it was very apparent early on what they were going to do to Kojo like most teams do. Yeah. They, 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 boxed him, <laughs> they boxed him on third down there. I'd never seen him like that. I mean, he couldn't even walk off the line of scrimmage. It was it, it was amazing. But they, they decided early, and then they made some mistakes a little later on that and, and made him pay. But they, they knew right away. They were going to take Kojo out. Yeah, that third and five, we kind of – we tried the formation on to get them to do that to Kojo so right. we could get the big fella, big Luke Logan, you know, one-on-one with one of their guys on the sideline. And, and Luke ran a great great route. James threw a great ball on time. And they was in pretty good coverage. Just a great ball out of James and great catch out of Luke. And so it was good, man. But the, our offense, man, uh, I'm, I've, I've ran this offense for as long as I can remember. And then, I mean, it's when you got the weapons and you got a quarterback like James yeah. that is kind of Houdini ish. Yeah, you know, that there he goes. <laughs> there ain't no doubt. I, I told Coach Hurd many times if we play a quarterback like the one we got and you blitz him, we're going to have a problem. You're going to pay. There ain't no way I'd blitz that sucker. Mm-hmm. No. You know, it, and coach out that uh, seven play drive again to open up the uh, the, the game and uh, thirty five yard touchdown pass from James to Luke on a really beautiful. I don't know if he ran a seam route there or what he did, but he they actually had some pretty good coverage there too. Great throw, great catch. Longhorns uh, score a touchdown again on a thirty five yard play. Go up six nothing with eight twelve left in the first quarter. Coach, uh, we had a little difficulty again last night on the kicking game. I know we'll get that cleaned up, but um, we uh, we missed a couple extra points and a field goal, and it um, it can hurt us. Yeah, there's no doubt. We've had some uh, some issues with with field goals and punt team this year, and that's uh, something we got to get cleared up, cleaned up if we're going, you know, win 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 some more football games for sure. Just thank goodness last night we was over able to overcome it, but you know we work on it every day at practice. As you see, it's just. We might just need to start going for two and don't punt the ball. You know, so I'm just kidding. But yeah, we'll get it fixed. Yeah, we will, Coach. And, you know, after our touchdown, uh, we gave the ball back to them uh, and held them on a series. They punted, and we got the ball back with a little time left in the the first quarter and ran down there again, had a little drive, stalled, and we missed a 39-yard field goal. Uh, But uh, at the end of the first quarter, it was uh, 6 nothing, Longhorns and uh, came out really well. You know – Speaking of the missed field goals and the missed extra points, Ryan Daganski, the kicker, he uh, – believe this or not, but last night at about 12 o'clock, he sent Coach Holly a video, and he kicked 23 straight field goals from the location he missed that one wow. last night. And that's just the kind of buy-in we got. After I mean, the game. He, after the game. He's out there. Wow. Sent a video. He's out there in sweats right by himself. Video and man, he made twenty three in a row. So he wants to get it done. There's He'll no get doubt. it fixed. He, he did coach him. You know, he, he didn't get help a lot of blocking. Let's be honest. <laughs> yeah. A couple of those. You know, yeah. you, you can't kick it if you got somebody in your face. And, no, for uh, sure. So there's no that it takes a team effort on the special teams all the way around. And uh, Ryan does a fantastic job with us. He's a great weapon, and I'm glad we have him. They uh for sure glad he's on our team. You know, defensively they. We we was really worried to death that, that they was gonna come in and because when they played Denmark they lined up with two tight ends two backs and tried to make Denmark like it and uh, we was worried to death that they they was gonna do us like that but we we did a little tweak our defense just a little bit all week to to adjust to that and 
You know, they, they hit us with a couple of screens. They did. They had a couple of screen plays well. Uh, we'll talk about one of those in a minute here. But they had a couple of screen plays, and they had, the, they had a big old bruising uh, running game. Coach, it's been a long time since I've seen an offensive guard play fullback and a fullback play tailback. But that's what they threw at us last night. <laughs> and they just ran it right down our throat, at least tried to. Uh, and uh, we stood the test. But that was a, a daunting task, seeing those young men coming at you. Yeah, uh, that, that number seven is a <laughs> phenomenal high school He's football player. Really good. I'm sure he'll get the opportunity to play college football somewhere. I mean, if you really want to be honest, their running back is bigger than everybody on our defense except for number 95 at Lousy Highwell. Absolutely. I mean, there's no – that's a true story. Yeah. But, man, I'll tell you what, those kids in, in black jerseys and they, black hats, they, they didn't care they, about they that. They stood the test of time. I, I remember their first drive there, uh, Dawson Miller, who had a phenomenal game last night, stuck his head right at number six and drove him back. And I thought that was a, a maybe a sign of what was going to happen the rest of the game. He sent a message there. He was uh, – our, our defense – Defense was truly – Our amazing. defense was embarrassed about the second half of Denmark. Yeah. And uh, th- there were some meetings this week. And there was some uh, film studies this week that, that it was not pleasant to be in those meetings because we don't play that. We're going to stop the run. They're going to throw and catch the ball some. But I was embarrassed that we played defense second half of Denmark. Our defense coaches were embarrassed and our kids were embarrassed. And they come out last night and that team was not going to run the ball. Well, Coach Hurd will get your attention. And he did. <laughs> <laughs> and they responded. The defense really played great last night, really with the exception of one play, which uh, in, in a way, uh, you know, started out the second quarter. They, they had a little screen play. I think we had a blitz on that play, if I'm not mistaken. It was a great call for what we called on defense. Beautiful screen play, ran about 65 yards. But other than that, truly, Coach, that was really the only play they had all night that, that gave us any any fits immediately. Yeah, that, that for sure. You know, they, they, they do a good job of screens there. I mean, you go back to – to the OTAs we played, man, man, they hit us in them. They they work them. Obviously, they work them because they're really good at them. You know, that, that mess is hard to feel. When you have to sell out to try to stop the run yeah. and, and and devote everybody to that, and, you know, that that's a good recipe and a good job on that part, man. They, again, Coach Kraft and his staff do a phenomenal job. They executed that well, and, uh, and they took a 7-6 lead with nine minutes and six seconds left in the first half, and, Coach, we uh, traded possessions. He was punted. We got it back. And um, really, in a lot of ways, the next possession, I thought, for us, turned turn the tide a little bit in the first half. We went on a uh, a drive that uh, ended up scoring on the, on the play. But it was uh, a really phenomenal job there by the offense, by James on a couple different locations, uh, situations, excuse me, where he uh, – so there he goes again. It was a couple runs he had and. uh Toward the end of the half, at, at, right before the halftime, there we 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 went down, coach. If I'm not mistaken, we had it deep in their territory. I think it was uh, first and ten from the twenty. If I'm not mistaken, we had a little uh, little motion call, and on that play, we hit Luke over the middle. I believe it would would have scored a touchdown. We had the penalty, and we came back. Um, and coach, that's when North made one of their mistakes. They decided they're going to play Kojo man to man. We picked it up and talked about what happened there. Yeah, we, we had seen. From early in the game, that the really time they was really only worried about Coach O was when it was third down. And uh, granted, I get it because I mean, I was, honestly, we do run the ball first most of the time. But I actually looked out there and called a timeout because the play clock or something was running down. I can't it remember, was. but yep. I called a timeout and I seen how they was lined up. And so I called a timeout and got them over the sideline and I told James and, and, and Luke and Coach O, I was like, look. One of y'all is to be wide open. The safety done screwed down on top of the tight end, and I knew Kojo was one on one, and I knew Luke had the opportunity to run by the to run by the safety. And that blame it, we jump off sides, and Luke Luke is gonna walk in the end zone. The safety screwed down just like I thought, and so I told the coach, I said, "Man, run it again. They ain't changing." So they changed up. The one of them's gonna be wide open, and man, we called it again, and sure enough. They out there, you know, playing that, that kid one on one with Kojo. And that was beautiful that was pass, of, beautiful catch. Uh, Kojo did a great job taking that. He, he, he was tackling on the play, too, but we didn't need that. We didn't need a flag. But uh, great play. And the Longhorn scored there at, at the end of the first quarter with, uh, excuse me, second quarter with 47 seconds left in the half. And we take a 13 7 halftime lead. Coach, uh, second half, they get the ball and uh, went on a 16 play drive. And at the end of this drive, we'll talk about it in a second, to me was the was the turning point of the game for sure. 
a big momentum shift. But uh, they they possessed the ball, coach, and marched it down the field on us. Yeah, that's what we was afraid of going in that they would they would three yards you to death, kind of so to speak, and then get it to fourth and one or fourth and two and go for it because they've done that all year. So you know it, it and that's exactly what it did. They they went up to halftime and. And made some adjustments and said, "Hey, we're just to we're just to make it a ball control game. Take the ball out of their offense's hands. That's what I feel like they did, and uh, just you know limit their possessions, keep their offense on the sideline, and they come out the second half, man, and and, and they did a good job to open the drive. You know, but we we met at halftime with the kids, man, and and we challenged them. We challenged their manhood because I mean, you go back and and you look at we've played really good defense." Most every game, the first half is set for one. And uh, we've come out the second half in, in, in deep end games and relaxed and didn't play well. And so we've been on challenging them all week, and we, we challenged them again last night at halftime. And, you know, North did come down and, and, and drive it down. But, man, we got to stop when we needed one. We did, Coach. It seemed like, that, like I said, in the second half they came out, and I thought, well, they're going to try to Denmark us here in the second half. And he lined it up and ran it. Coach, on that play, they had four first downs on that drive. They had three third down conversions. They had three times where they were behind the chains um, on the downs and a fourth down conversion. But they drove it down the field, 16-play drive. Coach, they had it fourth and one, I believe, in our five-yard line. And we flat out stuffed them. Do you want to win? That's right. You know, so that's uh, just Coach Hurd keep you know keep keep keeping them up. Coach Snyder, the defense coaches, just keeping them believing, man. Keeping the sideline fired up, getting them behind them, and kids playing hard, man. I mean, they bent they bent a little bit, but it didn't break. And uh, that mess is hard to deal with. I'm telling you what they do on offense, man. You uh, you know it, it's really. Kind of, sort of, we, we believe in the same thing and run the same plays. We just do it in a different way. And and, and as that game went on last night, one team – this is an old saying. A lot of people probably ain't going to mean know what it means. But one of the two teams was going to get tired of sticking their head and see mm-hmm. gap. And, uh, and, and, and whichever team surrendered to that first, the other team was going to have success running the football. And uh, – our kids didn't get tired of putting their head in seat gap. And I, I think theirs did. You know, we was, but man, what a blessing to have Big Harris and Peyton back. Ooh, man. That big sucker. It, you know, I hadn't really sat down and evaluated the game and, and looked through it, but I'm telling you right now, he, uh, that sucker was running to score. I, I, I believe, and I teach our kids and I tell our coaches, there's two types of runners. Whether you be a wide out, whether you be a quarterback, whether you be a running back, there's two types of runners. There's a runner that runs to get tackled, and then there's a runner that runs to score. I want the ones that run want to want to go score on my team, and that sucker was trying to go score every time he got it. Coach, he was tough last night. Pro- probably as healthy as as he's been since he got got injured, and then it showed last night for sure, um, without a doubt. But. You know, you know, Coach. Uh, we talked about the, the back to the drive that they had the sixteen play drive. The, to me, the most important part about it, obviously, was it kept them off the board. It could have could have gone up on us there. But again, we talked about it earlier. It was a game of possessions. Um, they had that sixteen play drive took up about twelve minutes. So they had one possession in the third quarter, and we had a, a, a possession in the third quarter too that ran to the fourth quarter. But they put it in there. We're behind. Puts a lot of pressure on us going into the fourth quarter, but. Fourth and one, man, and they just stuck them. Yeah, they did a great job. You know, I just – oh, Eliza Howell made a great play on that, and Dawson and uh, Davis Dobbs, man, our little old safety, he, they they just hit – they dropped him, man. Dead. They was, was yards short, and they converted another fourth and fourth and real short on the quarterback sneak. That was a very questionable uh, spot, but, you know, and – but speaking of that, how about this? Our <laughs> JV team this week mm. played – South Forsyth. And and I've been around football since 1987. And in that game, both offenses got one possession apiece in the first half. <laughs> Are you kidding me? I'm I'm not kidding you. And I mean it was a it was unbelievable. It was fun, yada yada yada. But we got in the truck. <laughs> I'll never forget this. And my son, <laughs> Levi, said, Daddy. That's how you like to play football, man. <laughs> I said, you dog on right. But I cannot believe it. And that's kind of how that was last night. Yeah. You know, they had that 16-play drive. And then 
I don't know how many plays ours was, but we had a nine. When we yep. stopped them on fourth and one, yep. we went 95 yards and made them like it. Coach, we did. We, that was an 11-play drive, which ate up a lot of clock, too. And so not only did we stop them on that big fourth down stuff, we took it all the way down the field, marched it down the field, and with 10 minutes and 41 seconds left in the game, we go up 20-7. to seven. I think we're you know starting to feel better just because – you're thinking that they probably can't air it out like the way that uh, some could. Uh, and so, you know, you're never comfortable in the game. But um, that, um, that was just a humongous turnaround. We stop them, go down the score, and, and flip the scoreboard. And again, 20-7 20, 20 to 7 with 10 minutes left in the game. And, and they came back, Coach, and went on another nine-play drive uh, down the field. Uh, they had it, uh, gosh, first and 10, and second and four, third and four, fourth and one, went for it again, first and 10. Second and 21, they picked that up. It was first and 10, second and fourth, first and 10. I mean, they just marched it down. But once again, Jake Johnson, big play, sack and a fumble, uh, and basically sealed the game for us. Yeah, you know, we love that, was, that again. In, in, in my, all my years of coaching, and, and I be, I'm a firm believer in what I'm about to say, is in, in, in stats, so it is. If you can make the offense snap it more than seven times in a row, something bad is going to happen. They're going to have a penalty. They're going to fumble. They're going to throw a pick. That, that's just – I mean, to be able to just, just – if you can keep them from scoring in seven plays, something bad is going to happen. And I, I'm a firm believer in that. And that was kind of – you know, our goal, man, just, just keep hanging on. Just keep hitting them. Keep hitting them. Line up, do it again. And eventually, a mistake's going to happen. Yeah. We just don't need to make the mistake. Let them make the mistake with, and put themselves in the, behind the chains or give us the ball. And I don't know. I think, I think we ended up with two turnovers we last did. night. Then. But both in the fourth quarter, Coach. I was just going to talk about it in a second. You know, after the turnover by Jake, uh, we, we had a little drive, took it down there, and unfortunately missed the field goal again. And North got it back, and team money took it to the house. Pick six for our second turnover in the fourth quarter. And, uh, Coach, that was a great play and certainly sealed the game at that point. You know, speaking of team money, I, I want to brag on this coach, Coach uh, Micah Kills. Mm. He's a community coach for yes. us that, that, that coached at North actually last year, and I kind of recruited him away through uh, – I met him through uh, watching my little girl play uh, basketball. Mm -hmm. He was at a facility where she was playing basketball, training the kid, and – we just met, yada, 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 and one thing led to another, next thing's over here. But during the heat of the battle, they, they were doing something to us on offense that we weren't prepared for. They were lining up in that empty formation. Mm, five wide, yeah. But they were putting – when people usually line up like that to us, we usually take our, our wheel linebacker or our Sam linebacker and we just put them in man coverage on – X, Y, or Z guy on one side of the field. Well, well, North did a really good job of taking one of one of their best receivers and making it where we was having to get that outside linebacker matched up on that kid. With number six coach, is that who it was? I don't really remember the number. Yeah, he, he was good. But Coach Skills come to me at the halftime, I mean, not the halftime, during the heat of the battle and said, Coach, let's take the wheel linebacker out and let's put Tommy in and let him play wheel linebacker. Mm -hmm. That way we got a DB in the game. And I was like, you know, I hugged his neck right down the side. I said, that's a great idea. Make it happen. And, and it wasn't three plays later, wow. pick six. So great adjustment out of our coaching staff and our kids and, and just being able to adjust like that. And a lot of times I get frustrated with, with some of our kids at, at Lambert because – I fuss at them all the time about we can't make adjustments. We have to do it, you know, and because I like to make adjustments and I like to tweak it here and tweak it there, and we struggle with that. But that's just football IQ, that you know that's gonna come, you know, when, when we you know just keep coaching them, man. It's gonna come. But very proud of them jokers for sure. Well, coach, after T Money took the pick six back, made it twenty six seven with three minutes to go in the game, and then uh, pretty much they got the back. And we held them, and then we got in the victory formation and. And still the victory for Longhorns, Coach. Um, again, we go 6-2 and two on the season, 2-2 two, two in region. And last night's uh, region scores, um, Lambert, of course, we won. And, and West beat uh, Central 42-10. South beat Gainesville 17-9.
you know, Coach, we talked about games about to won that game, but we're what a good football team they were. They're, 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 they're giving people some fits. Yeah, they are, man. I, the, I got a couple friends on that coaching staff, and, man, they got some good football team. They just – I mean, right now it looks like they're snake bitten a little bit, you yeah. know, but they're going to keep working. I promise you that. And they're going to they gonna get somebody that they ain't supposed to get. I guarantee you that 40 years over with. Well, Coach, uh, we looked at the region standings right now. South sits atop at 3-0 and and Denmark's 3-0. and Lambert's 2-2. and North is 2-2. and West is 1-2. and Gainesville's 1-2. and And Central's 0-4. And, and Coach, we, um, we go on the road next week to Central, play for Sy Central Bulldogs. And – uh we uh, got a chance, coach, to to make a big difference there. Yeah, they, uh, Coach Rooney, man, he, you know, he he, he taking over first year, taking over. I think he's been there. I don't know how long he was there with Coach Epler, and he was fortunate enough to get the job, man. I'm a, and I'm gonna tell you because we kind of have followed them, you know. The you know we played games or right after they they played. Oh. We played Denmark right after they played them, I mean, and then we played North right after they played them. So. You know, I've got, I have seen them, and I'm telling you what now. I mean, you take them against North in uh, last week's game. It was, uh, if I'm not mistaken, it was six to nothing at halftime. Take last last night against West. If I'm not mistaken, it's fourteen to seven at halftime, yeah. and their kids remind me of our kids. They might may not be the best looking kids. They may not be the biggest. But, man, they play as hard as anybody in the region. They're scrappy. And, man, it's going to be – you know, it's going to be a football game. I'm telling you. But the the thing that we got to do to take the the next step is we've got the culture fixed. We got a lot of things changed and headed in the right direction. But, man, we got to put two games back to back against good opponents. And we have struggled with that since I've been here. And – we got to go with consistency. That's going to be my message next week. We got to be consistent. We got to be who we are every time we play. Not we can't be jackal high and play like boo boo this day and then come out and be world beaters the next week and then boo boo again. Oh, we got to get consistent. And uh, so that's the goal coming up for, for, for Central. But make no mistake about it, we we're going to go over there looking for a dog fight because I'm I'm telling you they will have them ready well, to play. They're going to give it to us, coach and. Uh... Coach, we played on the road there last year too, right? What happened to the schedule there? We did. We was uh, we Lambert. We was in the middle of a uh, like a two week shutdown, or you know, we had Corona going on or whatnot, and so we, you know, we didn't want to host a game here with oh, all that. So okay. we just asked to play that's there. Right. So and uh, and they was gracious enough to do it. So we got to go back over there again this week, uh, this year, and you know, we'll we'll be there on time, but we got to play. We got to play. And no doubt about it, Coach. Uh, you know, it's uh, as we talked about each week here, this region's tough, and this region's very competitive. And if you're not ready to play on any night, you can get it handed to you. Absolutely. I want to get uh, – before we get off here, man, I want to I want to just give a shout-out to our program. The program at, at, at the current date is 17 wins, three losses, and one tie. And, uh, you know, the JV team went one and six last year. They finished this year five, one and one. And if you want to know the honest God truth, I'll take the blame for the two for the tie and the loss uh, because we we tied one, and I decided to go for two twice instead of kicking extra points. And then against South, we lost on a last second field goal, uh, nine to seven, and we had the ball I think third second goal from the two yard line and didn't score. Once again, my hard headed behind should have kicked the field goal, but it's neither here or there. But you know, we've closed that gap on JV. Yep. And and then our ninth grade. Talk about the freshman team, Coach. They're undefeated. Yeah. They're six and zero, oh, and they play the they play for the county championship this Thursday at six o'clock at the Horn. Man, we need a crowd. I, I, I don't people come out for that game. Yeah, yeah, we need people there. I I don't I don't know or don't I'm not from been around here long, but. I don't know how long it's been since a football program at Lambert, whether it be ninth grade, JV. The JV played for the county championship Thursday, last Thursday against South and come up two points short. But the ninth grade is playing for a county championship. And, man, I am so excited about those kids and our JV team for sure. Coach, building the foundations we talk about, it's very important to have those uh, sub-varsity teams playing well, and, and they truly have played great this year. We have. We appreciate you joining us here at the Tommy Watson Show. You can catch us 
weekly on Twitter at the Tommy Watson Show. Next week on the road at Central, we need a lot of fan support, big game, uh, opportunity to uh, put ourselves in a decent position, coach, uh, at the playoffs move, move forward. And so we look forward to seeing everybody at Central next Friday night. So for Coach Watson, I'm Doug Dersmer. This has been the Tommy Watson Show, brought to you by Express Oil Change and Our Engineers. Thanks for joining us, Coach. Thank you so much for doing this show with me every Saturday morning. Hook them. Hook them, baby.